from a 509 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Hey, Sam. It's Ronald Reagan. Oh, Ronald Reagan. How are you, sir? Good. I've got a comment, a question, and then a commentary. Oh. I'll go in that order. If you don't mind. <laughs> Great. Um, so the comment, I'm glad that you cleared up the zero-sum game thing with Mr. Dixon. I, I didn't catch it the first time, but I did listen to the Antifada, and I noticed they kept saying it sort of tongue-in-cheek, super sarcastic, and I wasn't sure what they were talking about. So okay, now I know. All right, great. Um, yeah, so the question I have is, who is talking Trump out of invading Venezuela or some other dumb war right now? Like, uh, who are the people in the room be saying, like, um, not no a good one. idea? No the, the people who want to have a war equal. with Iran? I don't know. I guess John uh, Bolton's like, order of operations. First, we right. destroy the Middle East utterly. Uh, potential, I could say maybe potentially a Mattis type. Maybe. But yeah. maybe. I don't think he's listening to that's Mattis. A big, and he's not listening. I mean, it's probably the generals who realize, right. oh, we would lose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> it's likely. Um, I, I think it's although they maybe they're the ones going. Why don't we go into Venezuela so we don't go into Iran? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they realize the the scales of disaster. Uh, the, the, I think the key would be to basically um, uh, create some type of crisis in Grenada again, huh. and then uh, we remember do that. those were the days rescuing Grenada 2.0. To be honest, if I had to guess, I'd say there's not a lot of desire for regi regime change in Venezuela because it, it serves their purposes as yes. an, a, a, an example of what happens when you move too far to the left. I don't think that Trump yeah, games things point. out like that, though. That would be funny. <laughs> and uh, your commentary. Well, I would think the CIA thinks I think that. the that CIA, guess, although, they, although, although I think that that's partially true, but I also think the sanctions they have there are almost specifically tailored to instigate a military coup like if you you know if you look at the breakdown of what sectors they're targeting and what they're trying to instigate but yeah it's a well, good it's, talking I mean, point it's win-win you either tank yeah. your economy yeah. which makes or, it a great right. example or you actually do get or you have a coup change. so it's either jamaica or chile but i i mean i don't think yeah but i'm sure that they don't want to invade yes in the cia but they do want yeah they have a win-win invading in other ways. ronald reagan you had a uh, now yeah. where are we on your list of things to do Okay, yeah, so I, I also was going to reenact the Dave Rubin joke from his stand-up show, but I'm going to skip that. I'll do that later. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about the, you're welcome, the denaturalization uh, task force. Yeah. Uh, just real quick. So um, apparently in 2009 they found, like, a box sitting around with, like, uh, 300,000 fingerprint cards that hadn't been scanned into the digital system. Um, and they said, oh, hey, we should probably upload these into the system and see, you know, what comes up. And they found uh, several hundred cases of people who had um, naturalized but had some sort of problem uh, when, their, when their fingerprints were uploaded. So people who'd either changed their identity, uh, maybe they'd been deported before and they came back and changed their name and they were able to, you know, commit fraud, essentially naturalize. And I saw um, that on Mad Men. That sounds like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, um, <laughs> that seems like kind of a small problem and, and something that the government has an interest in doing. Um, the issue now is that um, there's now they're saying there's 700,000 files that they want to look at, even though there were only 300,000 missing fingerprint cards. Um, and they're saying that they're looking now at thousands of people, even though there were only 800 leads from the, from the 300,000 missing fingerprint cards. So it does suggest, although they're being really secretive about everything, that they're uh, uh, starting to do a, a deeper dive uh, into this process. And you mentioned something that's really important. I think it's true. Um, the point really is just to cause chaos and fear. And we get... Uh, uh, like in my office as an immigration lawyer, calls, when it, whenever there's any little dumb thing, it gets blown way out of proportion. And so now we're getting calls saying, uh, I saw on the news Trump's taking away our, my green card. Like, what do I do about that? Or, uh, you know, just a general sense in the atmosphere that it's creating maybe fear. I shouldn't naturalize because maybe I'll get deported. I, I don't really understand the story, but that seems to be what is... Yeah, in the in the atmosphere. So, um, and the last thing I'll note is uh, USCIS, the 
the sub-agency of DHS that um, is going to be looking into all this. They don't have sev- uh, separate budget for, for this massive undertaking. And so they said that they're going to be using the application fees for people who, for example, are p- applying for naturalization or filing for family members. Uh, all of those applications are accompanied by a fee. They're just going to take money from that to go through hundreds of thousands of uh, naturalized citizens and and to do a deep dive into their cases, which means ultimately we'll see further delays in in the people who are actually trying to do it the so-called right way, which is, you know, what they're supposed to be doing. But there's all kinds of uh, little ways in which this is problematic and uh, everything is terrible. So have a good weekend. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you.